hand on each knee and circle the knees round. We're trying to get the knees wide. Bring the knees close into the chest. Really waking up the hips, keeping our hips moving. So the hips can do so many more movements than we probably use them for during the week. But keeping the whole range of movement free will help the whole thing function well. Because okay? otherwise we might get overuse in the bits we're always using and then stiffness or tightness in the other bits. Okay, hip circles are good because the, you know, we have ball and socket joints. So going the other way around, nice big circles. And we're waking up that fluid in the joints, which nourishes the joints. It kind of oils the joints. It makes the movements easier to do. Can we do a few more? After our last one, and we're going to do this pose. As, uh, it's called Druhalasana. And what it really means is a bit of rocking. So rocking the legs in and out. See how that feels, up and down. And keep going as far as you can with this. Okay, so if you can, come up to sitting. And then roll down to the spine, round the spine. Good. Now we want to take the legs over the head. As far as we can go. Okay, so maybe we can take the feet over to touch the floor, maybe. See how far they can go. Good. And the next time we come up, we straighten the knees and fold and touch the toes. Oops, I'm coming off my mat, sorry. And then doing again over the head, touch the floor with the feet if you can. And come back, feet down, slide away, hold the feet. Good, over. Use your hands on your back as you come into that halasana part of this, which is plow. So it's really good for our spine, flexibility of our spine. But make sure you've got nice thick mats or something as you practice. Or maybe put a little blanket under your back if you feel it's a bit, you know, uh, hard for the surface you'll practice on. One more time, Drew halasana. And as you come up, slide away, hold the feet, and relax. Good, well done. Bend the knees and just tuck your nose into your knees. Good.